I just want to tell you guys that I think that this AI hype is, it's just hype. I think a lot of people are saying that AI has taken jobs away from software engineers, and I disagree. And I think they're being quite indirect in what they're saying. AI cannot do anything that a software engineer can do right now. They're not good enough to replace us. However, I do feel like the products that many people had visions of, they realize that AI is going to do a better job of making these products in the future. So I think companies are a lot, are very hesitant to, to hire software engineers right now because we don't know exactly what is going to land in the next five years. So we are hesitant. Um, excuse me, I just backed all the way up for no reason. We are quite hesitant right now. Uh, if you can't find a job, it's okay. It's part of the industry. It'll come back up eventually. Keep your skills sharp. And so let's just look at some of these videos about it. Of it is about all. Is software engineer going to replace, or is AI going to replace software engineers? Next up, I got a question on AI, which I emotionally connected with. I'll condense it as follows. Hello, Lex. I'm a programmer and I have a deep fear of slipping into irrelevance because I am worried that AI will soon exceed my programming skills. Let me first say that I relate to your fear. It's scary to have a thing that gives you a career and gives you meaning to be taken away. For me, programming is a passion. And if not for this podcast, it would probably, at least in part, be my profession. So I get an uncomfortable feeling every time Claude, the LLM I use for coding at this time, just writes a lot of excellent, <laughs> approximately correct code. I think you can make a good case that it already exceeds the skill of many programmers, at least in the same way that uh, the collective intelligence of Stack Overflow exceeds the skill of many programmers, many individual programmers, but in many ways it still does not. Uh, but I think eventually more and more the task, the profession of programming will be one of writing natural language prompts. I think the right thing to do and uh, what I'm at least doing is to ride the wave of the ever-improving code generating LLMs and keep transforming myself into a big picture. Yeah, all you can do is ride the wave. Like, am I scared that AI is gonna take my job? Sometimes I'm more scared than other ways, but I, I feel like I'll just find something else to spend my life on. Picture designer versus low level tinkerer. What I'm doing and uh, what uh, I recommend you do is continually switch to whatever state of the art tool is for generating code. So for me currently, I recently switched from VS Code to Cursor. And before that, it was Emacs to VS Code switch. So Cursor is this editor that's based on VS Code that uh, leans heavily on LLMs and integrates the code generation really nicely into the editing process. So it makes it super easy to uh, continually use the LLMs. So what I would advise and what I'm trying to do myself is to learn how to use it and to master its code generation capabilities. I personally try to now allocate a significant amount of time to designing with natural language first versus writing code from scratch. So using my understanding of programming to edit the code that's generated by the LLM versus sort of uh, writing it from scratch and then using the LLM to generate small parts of the code. I see it as a skill that I should develop in parallel to my programming skill. I think this applies to many other careers too. Don't compete with AI for your job. Learn to use the AI to do that job better. But yes, it is scary on some deep sort of human level, the threat of being replaced. Uh, but at least I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I agree. And I hope you guys like, I remember some of you, some, I was telling this woman to, or one of my friends, right? She was asking me all these questions, like, ask chat GPT. I don't know everything. And she was like, she felt a little bit hesitant, right? Because it's like the same thing. Chat GPT is probably a better programmer than her. Um, but still, that doesn't matter. Like, um, you have to use these tools or they're going to leave you behind. If I don't use these tools, they're going to leave me behind. And so, um, yeah, it's just, 
it's interesting how much I lean on this on it. Like I think people have seen a tremendous productivity push in this era because of the coding tools. I have not used cursor AI, but I would like to get more into it and see it. Um, but yeah, we've been using code generation tools since the like nineties. And so, uh, I don't think it's as big as, you know, what they're saying. Uh, I'm not, at least at this moment, I'm not that afraid, but I'm sure it could happen. And it might, you know, it probably will. The job title of being a software engineer and running code, lots of code will probably go away. And it's sad, like as much as I love and hate coding, um, to think that I won't be able to do it in the future, does kind of upset me. But I think that's just part of, part of, uh, part of life. Like, can you imagine, you know, having a farm and then going from the farm into the factories? So, yeah, it's, I'm just setting it up. Yeah, it is, it's, it's tough, but, you know, it's part of life. Change is part of life. And I'm really excited to see where we go with the AI wave. I'm just clicking this. I'm just looking at an ad now. So we're looking in the clip by this guy. I think the Amazon CEO said something like, we're going to be done with engineering in the next two years. And that's so good because I don't want to write all this code, bro. But let's take a look. Saved us the equivalent of 4,500 developer years of work. What's up, everybody? How's it going? This past weekend, I came across a post on LinkedIn about AI from none other than Andy Jassy. He's the current CEO of Amazon, who replaced Chad Bezos a few years ago. And in this video, I want to share this post because I think that it really captures the true impact of AI on software engineering, the impact that it's having right now and that it's going to continue having on this industry. So I'll just read through the post and give my comments. It starts out with one of the most tedious but critical tasks for software development teams is updating foundational software. Very true. If you've been in software engineering for even just one year, you've likely experienced a migration. You have to migrate an entire code base to a new framework, or you have to upgrade an entire code base to uh, the latest version of the language. And it's very, very tedious. It's not new feature work, no, it's not, and it doesn't feel like you're moving the experience forward. As a result, this work is either dreaded or put off for more exciting work or both. So I can totally relate, and I'm sure that many of you can totally relate to this. During the two years and two months and eight days, if I remember correctly, that I was at Google as a software engineer, I remember I had to take part in many of these migrations, namely, the big one that we had to do was we had to migrate the entire Google Cloud Platform UI uh, to TypeScript, from JavaScript to TypeScript. And I think that we had to upgrade Angular from like Angular 1 or 1.5, whatever, whatever it was called, to Angular 2. And uh, that was a lot of work. Like by my rough estimate, I probably spent about 20% of my software engineering time at Google working on these migrations. And I remember like, I really disliked it. It was like really boring, really tedious. Like you said, it didn't feel like new feature. Yeah, that's part of being a software engineer. There's a lot of unsexy work, a lot of pushing pencils, but you know, imagine what he's saying. It, you know, gives the company a lot of value, saves them, makes them money and keeps them safer. And so it's extremely important work, but it's not always fun. And like you get to show how intelligent you are as an engineer. Your work, it didn't really feel like the kind of work that would you know, help me get promoted or teach me new stuff about engineering. It wasn't exciting. And the exact same thing happened at Algo Expert, my company. Uh, we had to uh, migrate the entire code base, uh, the front end code base to TypeScript. Uh, we had to migrate the entire front end code base to the latest version of React, functional components. We also had to upgrade many times like the actual 
coding solutions to our algorithm style coding interview problems in certain languages like I'm speed it up. the post. Amazon Q, our Gen AI assistant for software development, so probably some sort of internal AI tool, is trying to bring some light to this heaviness. We have a new code transformation capability. And here's what we found when we integrated it into our internal systems and applied it to our needed Java upgrades. Brace yourself, you might wanna be sitting down when you hear this. The average time to upgrade an application to Java 17 plummeted from what's typically 50 developer days. So 50 developer days, that's you know, almost two months of a software engineer working exclusively on you know, upgrading a single, single application at Amazon to Java 17. It plummeted to just a few hours, almost two months of work for a software engineer to just two hours, okay, or a few hours. We estimate that this has saved us the equivalent of 4,500 developer years of work. 4,500 developer years of work. You guys hear me? Years of work. Yes, that number is crazy, but real. I don't think that the CEO of Amazon, one of the largest companies in the world, would publicly say on LinkedIn an outrageous number like that, that it has saved them the equivalent of 4,500 developer years, and then uh, like acknowledge that that number is crazy, but say that it's real, but be lying. In other words, I think he's telling the truth. I would agree. You know, it's, it's interesting, but that just frees up developers to um, do more complicated problems. I don't think it it has harmed their jobs. And you know, I believe it. I believe that it worked for us. So let's continue. In under six months, we've been able to upgrade more than 50% of our production Java systems to modernize Java versions at a fraction of the usual time and effort and our developers have shipped 79% of the auto-generated code reviews without any additional changes. And again, this is something that I can definitely believe because I look back at the times that I did these migrations at Google and on Algo Expert, and all the time, like the reviews, you know, when you're reviewing the other engineers' work where they migrated the, the application, there isn't much to review because like if the pull request or the change list passes all the internal tests, all you have to do is kind of like skim through it, make sure like, yeah, they clearly didn't tweak any, you know, major other things in the system and it, it should be good. And all the time or most of the time, it is good. In other words, like I don't, it usually doesn't require that much review. It's very quick to review because they don't care about it. Yeah, so what I see, you know, what we see here is that it's not necessarily, it hasn't taken our jobs, but it's done things that we dislike and that can free up our time. Like, I'd be af afraid when it like starts, like people say that it starts making Uber, you know, Amazon is getting into Uber because they've generated so much code that it's so easy to get into that business. That would be, you know, the time where I'd be afraid. So then, let's go into the math. The benefits go beyond how much effort we've saved developers. The upgrades have enhanced security. Okay, it's probably you're on your versions of Java or you know, you're on a better, you know, you're on TypeScript, so it's a bit more secure. And reduced infrastructure costs, providing an estimated 260 million in annualized efficiency gains. 260 million in annualized efficiency gains. And that makes sense. If you look at it like 4,500 4, developer years, which by the way, that figure was likely gotten by the fact that like, you know, if it saves about two months of developer days, two months of developer work for one application, and you think that Amazon has like thousands, maybe more than, you know, dozens of thousands of applications to upgrade, then yeah, you get to the 4,500 figure in, in developer years, Amazon itself. 20, uh. 100. Is Let's get back. Say this is a great example of how large scale enterprises can gain significant efficiencies in foundational software hygiene work by leveraging Amazon Q. 
It's been a game changer for us. And not only do our Amazon teams plan to use it or use this transformation capability more, but our Q teams plan to add more transformations for developers to leverage. In other words, he's hinting at you know, this AI is going to be able to do more stuff, maybe more complicated migrations, more complicated upgrades. So to me, this post is, is really wonderful. First of all, like it is insanely impressive. Um, like I don't think you can look at this and not be impressed. Just the sheer amount of time and therefore money saved is incredible. But I think that this really speaks to the true impact of AI on software engineering. My most recent video was, uh, you know, I shared my honest thoughts about the current state of the industry and how, you know, right now the industry software engineering is not doing great at all. It's really rough to get a job. And I talked about AI, you know, how some people are doomers about AI. They think that AI is going to completely replace software engineers and other people, which is likely the camp that I fall into, are more optimistic about AI. And I think this post supports that optimism. AI is going to replace all of the tedious work that software engineers have to do. All these migrations, these upgrades, these internal like updates that are super boring, not exciting, they're not doing feature work, they're invisible to the end customer, you really feel like a cog in the machine when you're doing them. Well, guess what? You're no longer going to have to do them because AI is going to do them for you. I can only imagine that if I were back at Google, where I had spent, let's say, about 20% of my time working on migrating a code base to Angular 2 from Angular and to TypeScript from JavaScript, if I had been able to spend that 20% time doing just more feature work, I would have been way more happy. Upper management would have been thrilled. I remember there was so much work on Google Cloud Platform that we needed to do and that you know we, we were just never able to do. It's like this infinite race, like we're, we're never able to complete all the work. It would have been incredible. And if you can imagine that AI is just going to keep getting better, right? So it might allow you to make some of your feature work faster, right? Some of the tedious things for feature work is going to be faster. All the, let's say, like, you know, generating skeletal, you know, skeleton files, like all the, all the crap that you just hate doing as a software engineer, AI is going to do it or is already doing it. And so I think that, like, if you're a software engineer who's kind of scared right now, worried about AI, this should do the opposite. It should, it should give you motivation, like, learn AI, start to work. Or all right. I agree with this guy. So we start, we've seen two sides. We've seen one one guy say like, hey, like I'm afraid it's going to take my job, get a use of tool. And then we see another side that's like, hey, this stuff is making my life better. It's taking it's taking my suffering away and it's giving me more time to work on things that I love. Maybe one day AI is going to take away the things we love, but then we will find new things to love and fall in love with. So I know it's a scary time to be an engineer, um, but rejoice. Like, they're, they're so, the future is bright um, for us to still show how much we know in our careers. Amazon Q cannot do, uh, still not perfect yet, still not able to replace me as a software engineer. And if you continue to work hard, and be the best programmer that you could be, perhaps one day it will not be able to replace you. So, but until then, peace, deuces, we are out.